Take your Bible, if you would, and turn with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to begin by reading verses uh, 10 through 13 of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now I, uh, at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let's look the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this day you've given. I thank you for the opportunity we have to study the truths that are found in this passage this day. I pray as we continue to look at your word, speak to our hearts. Help us to see the truths that they are here for us. Help us to apply them to our lives. I pray you bless them what's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story is told that a nominating committee one day was discussing a particular person as regarding a particular position. And one of the men made this statement. The trouble with him is he's a thermometer, not a thermostat. When asked to explain, he said, well, a thermometer only reflects the environment around him. When it's cold, he's cold. When he's hot, he's hot. Circumstances decide his spiritual temperature. A thermostat, on the other hand, controls the environment around him. He changes it. It doesn't change him. So the question comes down to this today. Are you a thermometer or a thermostat? Paul was a thermostat. I want to challenge you. God wants us to be that way. God wants us to learn the secret of contentment. And that's what this passage is talking about. But Paul... Well, hey, I'll show you eventually here. He actually terms it the secret of contentment that he actually learned. He learned this particular secret. secret. I want to challenge you. We need to learn the secret of contentment. There's a twofold formula that's found here in this passage that we need to apply if we're going to, in fact, have this secret of contentment in our Christian life. The first formula, the first part of it that's found, is found in verses 11 and 12. Actually, I'll read from verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you, also, uh, you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I was speaking in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. The first thing we need to understand regarding the secret of contentment is it's detached from our circumstances. It's detached from our circumstances. Circumstances should not control us. There's three truths I want us to understand. First of all, this is not natural. This is not a natural thing. What is natural or according to the, the nature is to allow what we have or what's going on in our life or the way people treat us, our circumstances, to affect us. When things are going well, we're happy. When things are not going well, we're not happy. Sometimes we're at the top of the world. Sometimes we're at the bottom. And it's all based on our circumstances. Now, I love, personally, I love roller coasters. I do. I've yet to find one that I didn't like. There's some I like better than others. But I love roller coasters. Just the whole idea of getting down there and just, I don't know, I guess it's just the whole idea of flying that fast with the you know, very good possibility you could die. <laughs> and it's kind of exciting. You know, but I love roller coasters. And Sandy used to be the same way. Lately, she's not been so much, though. When we were younger, we, rolled, we would go and ride roller coasters like nonstop. It was great. I love roller coasters. But our Christian life should not be a roller coaster. Circumstances shouldn't control us. When things are going well, we shouldn't be at the top. And when they're not, at the bottom. Because, in fact, that's not the way God wants us to be. The secret to contentment, first of all, is this detached from our circumstances. 
But this is, again, not natural. Not only is this not natural, the second truth I want us to notice regarding it is this truth, this attitude, must be learned. Look at this verse. It says, I, uh, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. There are two Greek words, two different Greek words, that could have been used to give this idea of learn. One of the words, and without getting real Greeky and telling you the Greek words, one of the Greek words had the idea of to learn by precept. That he read it in a book. That he got the knowledge. The other word, and the, the word that he actually uses, is he learned by experience. He learned in the school of hard knocks. He learned by experience how to actually be content. This word is used in connection with the rites of the mystery religion. In that time, it was not a word that was used common in the New Testament, but it was used in other writings. And the idea was, it was the, the word actually has the idea to be initiated, to learn the secret. He actually had learned the secret of contentment. He says, I have learned to be content when circumstances are good and when, they, when they're bad. He says, I've learned the secret of deep peace based on detachments from circumstances. The word that's used here in the same verse says, I've learned, uh, actually, I, uh, where are we at here? Uh, okay, verse, uh, the end of verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That word content is found only in this New Testament verse, no other place. But it was actually a favorite word, by the way, of the Stoics. The Stoics took it to mean something different. To the Stoics, contentment was, well, it was, uh, it was self-sufficiency. It was mechanical self-sufficiency that they were willing to put up with whatever they had to because the Stoics believed that flesh was sinful and therefore they would put up with that kind of stuff to make them feel good. Paul doesn't use that term this way. Paul uses this term, but his sufficiency is found in Christ. We find that from verse 13. Because he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, our contentment, our peace that God wants to give us, the secret to contentment, he says, first of all, is detached from circumstances. And this is not that. This is not something that comes just by the very fact that we are a human and we are, you know, live our life. It's not natural. Not only is it not natural, it's an attitude that needs to be learned, but the second, the third thing I want us to notice is this attitude is needed in every area of our life. Look at verse 12. I know I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed to both be full and to be hungry, both to abound and have suffer need. See, many Christians are either on a spiritual mountaintop or in a spiritual valley of the of scripture. The reason is their emotions are tied to the exter externals of life. Here's the question. Could you be just as happy without your new car, without your snowmobile, your vacation home, your new furniture, your dishwasher, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your job, your allowance, the stuff we've accumulated in the <laughs> Can you be just as happy without those as you are with those? Could you be just as happy if you, in fact, were suffering with an illness that you wouldn't recuperate from? Or am I only happy when things are going well? The Apostle Paul tells us that we need to learn the secret of it. And it is, in fact, detached from circumstances. It isn't based on the circumstances we face. What he tells us it is, it is in fact dependent upon Christ. Look at verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I want to look negatively at what this verse is not talking about. And I want to look positively at what it is talking about because I believe this verse is a verse that we often use in a wrong fashion. Because it really doesn't mean a lot of times what we think it means. Negatively, this is not simply toughing it out. See, without this element of Paul's formula of contentment, detachment from circumstances would be mechanical self-discipline. It would, in fact, be stoicism. 
Because he would just have been able to say, it doesn't matter what I go through, I am able to do it. I put up, you know, I grab my bootstraps, I tie them tighter, and I keep on going. But that's not what he's saying. <clears throat> when I was younger, I used this verse for all kinds of stuff. Because I'd heard it for all kinds of stuff. You know, I used it as, you know, as, a, as a reason behind how I thought I could lift the new set of weights that I bought that I wasn't able really to lift. Brought those 110 pound set of weights in. I wasn't even, I didn't even weigh 110 pounds myself at that time. Put all the weights on there and figured I could do this because Christ strengthens me. I smashed all kinds of stuff in my basement that day. Because that's not what this verse means. Positively, what does this mean? The strength for everything lays in the one who continually empowers us. That's literally what this is saying. Literally, this verse reads from the Greek, if you would in fact translate this literally and put it word for word in, it says this, I am strong enough for all things in connection with the one who keeps empowering me. That's in fact what this verse says. Uh, yeah. I am strong enough for all things in connection with the one who keeps empowering me. What he's saying is, I can do this because God continually empowers me. Christ gives me the ability continually. See, the fact that it was, this word strengthen is kind of a cool word. And it's a word you all, you've all heard and known. The root word of this word strengthen is the word dunamis. We get the word dynamite from it. He says this ability to strength lies in the source beyond ourselves. If we're going to be strong enough for any and all circumstances that life will throw at us, we don't get it based on our own ability to tough it out. We get it from Jesus Christ. This adequacy, this adequacy comes through attachment to the adequate source of power, the Lord Jesus Christ. His power is still available to all believers who are dependent upon him for it. See, we need to let Christ work in our life instead of doing it ourselves. He says, you can be, he said, I can be content in everything I face. He said, but it's not me. It's Christ. When Paul was writing to this church, they had wanted to send him a gift for a long time. He was in prison. There were some churches that we, he calls a community with them. Basically, the idea was they were sending support for him. If you were in a prison back then, it wasn't like nowadays. You know, nowadays you get your three hots and a cot and you know, you know cable TV and the whole deal or whatever. It wasn't like that back then. Back then, a lot of times you didn't even get food provided. You got your meals based on whether or not you got people who would bring them into you. The Apostle Paul was being supported at times by others. Churches would send him stuff to in fact support and help the thing. There's there's thought. We know that he was under house arrest at part of this time. That he was actually in a house and, and chained to Praetorian guards. The thought is that he probably had to pay for the house. So he could be arrested in it. Isn't that cool? Not something we'd like to have. But that's, that was the way they did it back then. They were at one time there had been churches that had sent some support. The Philippian church had sent often. But he said in this verse, he said... I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at your, verse 10, at last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you also were careful, but you lacked opportunities. Now, I know you guys wanted to send things to me before. You were interested and you were concerned about me. You just didn't have the opportunity. He said, I, I'm happy that you were able to, to, to do that again. But he said, don't worry. I'm not speaking out of this of, out of respect of one. He said, I didn't hurt as a result of it. He said, I knew how to abase and abound everywhere in all wise. He said, I so I, I know how to be full, and I know how to be hungry. I know how to be bound and how to suffer. See, if we want real lasting joy, joy in our life, and I don't mean the joy that goes and comes like a roller coaster going up and down the hill. 
The joy isn't based on our circumstances. It needs to, in fact, be detached from it. Not only is it not, not, it not only is, is the secret of contentment, and Paul, as I, as I mentioned before, uses that idea of that being a secret, something that needs to be learned. It doesn't come natural. It's something you've got to get down. And the first part, he says, is number one, it's detached from our circumstances. Number two, it's attached to Jesus Christ. Christ is the key to everything for us. He's the key to our being able to weather the storms of life without being swept away by the waves and the winds. Dependence on him is the key to everything in the Christian life. I want to challenge you. We can be content in whatever state we're in. And that's easy to say when things are going good. It's not so easy to say when things are going bad. But the way it works is the same, good or bad. It's not based on circumstances. It's based on our connection with Jesus Christ and our dependence upon him. I want to challenge you. We really do need to learn the secret of contentment. Most people I know are up and down. We all tend to be that way. Paul's telling us that we don't need to be. We can have true contentment and true joy that's detached from the circumstances we have. Then is on him is the key. Let's look at the word. Father, I thank you for this day you've given. I thank you for your word and the challenge of your word to our hearts. Help us to, in fact, have the contentment that you alone can give. It is, in fact, detached from circumstances. It is dependent. Pray be with each and every one of us. Help us, Lord, to apply the truths of your word to our hearts. Give us the joy that you say only you can give. I pray to be with some blessing stuff. In Jesus' name we pray. Take your hymn book and turn with me if you would.